How'd you die? He was going to party. Nice. Shield. Oh, well, let's get up and go help Fizz. Sounds good. I am just in a Pisces. <laughs> to a guy he came flying up as I came past him <laughs> right as I'm like after burning into this I'm turning into the gladius and he blew up hello everybody and welcome this is fist two five Coming back actually with another ship review. This time it is the Anvil Gladiator. And we are here on the planet Hurston. And let's take a quick walk around the ship and get started because it looks like there's a windstorm that's about to hit. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, I tried to make this review a little bit more in the light, but uh, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out. But um, uh, at least we can see the ship a little bit better. So from the front of the ship here, we see we have a, some kind of a long probe. I don't know if this is airspeed or whatnot, but it sticks out the front. We can see this ship has kind of a unique design because the, the landing gear, uh, there's one on each wing and then there's one on the fore and, and the, I guess the bow and the stern of the ship. Um, but the one on the front here is pretty large and it kind of sits the pilot up pretty high. Uh, we'll see when we get in. I mean, it looks even there, but the pilot and, and even the gunner sit up pretty high. As you can see, uh, this ship, my gunner in the back, has two size 3 GT220s mounted on here. Uh, I changed this around after using shredders for a long time uh, because they just weren't as effective. Um, so the GT220 does more DPS, it, it kind of has better tracing, and overall I just like it better as a gun. Uh, coming around to the port side of the aircraft, we can see it has uh, intakes on the left and right side. Of course, these sides are mirrored. This is a symmetrical ship. Um, we have an attrition two. I'm sorry, an attrition three laser repeater, not gimbaled, mounted on the left wing. And then we have some Strike Force two size two missiles on these missile racks on the, on the pylons on the left wing. Uh, we can see here's our left uh, landing gear strut. As we come around the back side, we can see that the left wing is uh, a little bit different and the right wing is the same way. Uh, the aesthetics of this ship are amazing. Overall on the ship, it's probably my least favorite ship in game just because I think it needs a little bit more love. I know others would disagree with me, but I like ships that I can do a lot of stuff with solo. And uh, this ship, to me, isn't that good unless you have a gunner uh, in the back. But we can come around the back and we'll see that these, these, uh, well, I guess they're like horizontal and vertical stabilizers in the tail. Uh, they will act as our flight control services in the back. We, we have pretty good size engines here in the back. Uh, as you can see, they're on because I had to fly to this, uh, this planet, but... They, they look, they look decent sized. The ship is fairly quick. Uh, it is, it is made to be a fighter. So anyway, I do like the back of this ship. Uh, as we go around the starboard side, we can see it mirrors the port side with these, uh, these tail fins almost, I guess we would call them. Um, uh, and we can see the, the right strut, uh, and the landing gear there. Um, our, our missiles, our size two missiles. So that's uh, eight size two missiles on this. And the pilot controlled size three. Oh, the ship is, you see the ship bouncing right there? Windstorms on Hur Hurston, everybody. Almost said Houston, it's Hurston. Uh, some of the markings, caution, do not obstruct. That is actually the entrance on the, on the port side to the pilot and the gunner. And then under, under here, we can't really see it. But under here is going to be our torpedo bay, and we do have some size 5 torpedoes on here. So, 
without further ado, while the wind picks up, we're going to go ahead and hop in this ship. Uh, there's the pilot seat and open exterior. Let me open the exterior real quick. I think it's just... Yeah, it's just so the ladder would come down. To get to the, the gunner seat, it's going to be on the, the back side of the same panel. Enter gunner seat, open exterior. But we're going to obviously get in the pilot seat. Let's go ahead and do that right now. You can see the, the, the pilot seat drops down on the front. It's similar to a lot of other aircrafts. We're going to go ahead and hop in this thing. It sounds like uh, the windstorm is really picking up. Let's go ahead and turn on our ship. Okay, the ship is online. We're going to go ahead and take off and see if we can clear this atmosphere. Gear is still down. So I just kind of want to get into a... Uh, just kind of above Hurston here, and so we can take a little more detailed look around the ship. Clear the atmosphere a little bit and head out into the uh, to, into space a little bit. Okay, so now we are it's a lot more quiet. We're sitting here above Hurston. Um, let's take a quick look around the ship. I am going to drop the gear again so we can take a little bit more detailed look have some of the sun on us here um, you can see there's markings here on the ship JA 301 not sure what that means I know the model of this ship is a uh, it's a gladiator and I believe it is the T8C gladiator uh, the C being the civilian model uh, the A is the military model. this is a model that the UAE military uses uh, for kind of a light torpedo bomber, I guess I would call it, because it, all, it is all size one components. So it's, uh, I've died in this thing before. Um, it packs a, a huge missile punch, but as far as the dogfighting goes, it's not that good. Um, there's not a lot of weapons at your disposal. Um, unless you have a person in the gunner seat, then it becomes quite uh, offensively capable. So really, it, really, if you're going to do any type of dogfighting in this ship, you, you need two people. Um, we can see in our our strut here, it kind of we're going to see that close up as the gear will fold away into that right a part of the wing, which is really really a cool design actually. Now we can see the back landing gear will fold up into its own section. The front will close up into that section uh, just towards the. Okay, blue cancer light. Okay. Front will close up into the section just uh, to the, like in the bottom of the keel of the ship and the, the fuselage. And most importantly, we can see those four size five torpedoes, which is really what the ship is all about. It's got, it's got a lot of missile punch here. So you see we have eight size twos and four size fives. So... I mean, if you were to unleash everything onto one target, yeah, you do a lot of damage. We can also see a really good view of those pilot-controlled attrition three repeaters. Uh, let's go in from the from the top. It has that kind of trademark anvil uh, circular disc right in the center of the fuselage. I'm not sure like exactly what that is or what purpose that serves because other ships don't have it, but it is certainly a Kind of a trademark of the anvil. I do really like the aesthetics of the ship. I think it looks amazing. Like it should be an awesome, awesome ship, but it's just, it's just not. <laughs> not for me anyway. I don't, I don't love it. 
I love the aesthetics. I love the look. I love the paint scheme, the, the kind of darker gray and the red and the black. I, I really want to love this ship, but I don't. Um, just not my cup of tea. Anyway, let's uh, retract the landing gear and see what that looks like. So as we can see, the, the left and right struts kind of went into the, the edge of the wing like we're, we talked about earlier. Um, let me close up the missile bay. We can see that. I mean, it's really streamlined, uh, just like this. It looks fantastic. Uh, we can see that the, the back strut in the stern closed up in the front. Landing gear strut also closed up to the heel fuselage. Looks very much like a uh, modern airplane we would have around today. Um, I mean, a little more futuristic, but it, it certainly has enough wings. Uh, enough surface area on the wings to produce lift. So I, I am going, before we go out into space, we're going to fly it around the atmosphere a little bit and, and just kind of get a feel for it. Um, but opening up the weapons again, this is it for the pilot. You have two attrition three, so it's not that not that powerful. I do like the bubble and the, and the man turret for the gunner. Uh, looks great. And it actually operates pretty well. Uh, there, there's quite a bit of rotation you can get in there. Let's uh, go ahead and hop into the cockpit, turn the weapons on, and we're going to take a look around. With you know, there's there's it has these struts up here, uh, kind of kind of an anvil aesthetic. It's not that bad, although it does block a little bit of view. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the small viewport in front with the HUD, although it does fit the HUD rather nicely. There is some really good glass on the left and the right, uh, but overall cockpit view, there's nothing on the ground. Uh, it, it's okay. It's I would say it's average. As far as our multifunctions displays here, we have six of them, which is very helpful. Um, also, in the very top left and top right of the screens, we're going to have our ship indicator and our target indicator. So what we could do on these screens is change them around. And uh, I like to change this one over to my actual shield strength. That way I kind of know where my shields are at. Uh, but we do have comms, we have heat, we have, we have power, we have weapons, we have ship status. Um, so good, good, pretty good default displays on here. I can't wait till we can actually change them for real. I have no idea why it says power low. We have a JS-300 in here. Uh, shouldn't be an issue. But let's... Uh, let's give it a fly around in the atmosphere. And then we will... Give it a... You know, a, a little... Speed test. In space. And we'll check out our speeds. Let's do this in third person. you out. There's one thing about Hurston is that it is just really, really, really pretty. I don't want to know how fast I can go in atmosphere. Now, granted, I'm at, you know, over 7,000 meters. But I'm getting up into the 400s, and of course I'm going, I'm heading down, so gravity's assisting, but as we pass through this cloud layer and get closer to the ground, let's see what we can do. There we go. I can't wait till they actually get 3D clouds. You can see our speed drop down dramatically, and we're a little bit after. We're roughly looking at in, in you know close to the surface, somewhere there in the three, you know low three hundred, three thirty ish. Let's go into third person. Let's see what the afterburner looks like. Looks pretty good. As we pull some, some G's for a turn. 
I like to do these these hard pulls in third person because then I don't see the blackout and the red out that we would see in uh, from the pilot view uh, first person. Not bad. It's 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 a pretty good atmospheric flyer. It's very stable. Uh, I would say a lot more stable than some other aircraft. Hey everybody, this is Fist in post production. Um, I, I experienced a crash desktop uh, while I was flying around Hurston. So uh, in an effort to keep this video a little bit short, I've I've just cut it right here, and we're gonna go into after I logged back in and I'm in space, and we're gonna go get into some kind of a solo dogfighting mission in the Gladiator. All right, everybody, so let's uh, let's find a dogfighting mission. Remember, always take call to arms when you're gonna do any type of dogfighting. If it works, it does untrack that. And we're just gonna find something local around the system, and I'm gonna show you the, I guess the town side of the, uh, the gladiator because it's not going to be. I mean, I, I'll use the missiles, I'll use the torpedoes, but it's, it's really at my disposal. All I have is a couple of size threes, so we'll go for a high risk target. And while we head towards Ikiro Key, a high risk target, I'll see you when we get there. All right, everybody, so we just came out of Quantum, headed for our Iris target bounty in the Gladiator, and we're just gonna make our way through some of this debris. Wait for him to show up. Okay. You know, the it does have really good retro thrusters on uh, the Gladiator. So that's impressive. The ship is just, man, I really, I really want to love this ship. Uh, I like the green lighting inside of here. Uh, I do like having those displays, those four multifunctional displays right there at my, at my fingertips at the bottom of the screen. Um, That works. Sometimes it doesn't work when you when you go to change your MFD. Oh, and enough pop. We are going to head to our target. Let's since we're since we're above max range. Oh, there we go. For our stalkers, we're in range. It's a war. Let's see if we can hit it with our two torpedoes here. Switch over to size twos. We did hit him. I think we missed our chance to get our size twos on him. The initial joust is complete. Now I'm just trying to hit the pip. Whoa! We're gonna desync. He hit me. <laughs> oh man! Sometimes I just have to laugh. This game can be a little crazy. We were fighting a Valkyrie last night that was just like, man, I want to hire that pilot because it was performing moves that just can't be done. It's to change the directions. Thanks for flying into the sun, buddy. Okay, there goes the warden and our main bounty. So now we're hitting up his friends. This is the Gladius. We're in range. Won't lock missiles. Fired a couple of missiles, took out that Gladius, because man, those things are janky. Mustang Delta, let's try to take him out. Sure, let's see what it see if we can get a torpedo on him. Just see what it does. So I'm gonna go afterburner in reverse. Hopefully I won't hit an asteroid behind me. Now we're in range. A little bit longer lock time on those size fives, but we fired him. 
see if it takes out that Delta. Boom! So there you go. Uh, there's the high risk target mission. I know it went pretty quick, but this thing also has some powerful torpedoes on it and missiles, and that is the key for the Gladiator. Um, if you like missile gameplay and torpedo gameplay, this is a ship for you. Um, the problem is now, I really can't just go, I mean, I guess I could go grab another mission, but really I would want this ship to be at full strength when I go into a fight, so I have the advantage, so I would need to go back to Everest or wherever and restock, resupply, and then come back into a fight. So it's going to take longer to earn money. It's just not very efficient. But going into a single fight, lots of power. Now, if I would probably take this uh, in the Hammerhead missions where you have to fight Hammerheads uh, just so I can launch those torpedoes and all the missiles. I would want to go in it with a gunner uh, just so I have that extra firepower as I try to fly around the Hammerhead and try to kill it. So... This is pretty much the uh, solo gameplay dogfighting review of the Gladiator. Um, next, we're going to do some two-person gameplay. We're going to have someone in the gunner seat, and uh, they're going to be we're going to be flying around and, and taking on targets. And I think it's going to be Jawa that's in there. And then I'm going to hop in the gunner seat, and we're going to fly around and take on some targets that way, so you can see that. And then we'll do some reviews on uh, Urkel Games of my preferred loadout check out the RSI website and then we'll wrap up with uh, some chase camera footage and see the gladiator actually in action uh, with hopefully two people in the gladiator at its you know at its full power and see what that looks like and then uh, we'll end the video and so if you haven't already please smash that subscribe button um, I don't know if you are aware of YouTube's uh, model of their algorithm the way it works is the more subscribers I have the better the channel gets as far as uh, being pushed out to other people for views and the more subscribers I can get. Ultimately, our goal is to monetize this channel. And once we get monetized, we're going to throw a lot of that money right back into the game. We'll be able to do ship giveaways and different things like that on this channel. But, uh, you know, I'm not the richest person in the world, so I would definitely love YouTube to pay for some of that. And who knows, maybe even CIG will like us and They'll start giving us ships. So we can give them away. We can give them away to you as the players uh, and as the viewers. So uh, please like, comment, subscribe, and uh, see you on the next clip. Okay, everybody. So this is uh, the Anvil Gladiator. Uh, Jawa has agreed to be my turret gunner in the Shredders. Say hello, Jawa. Hey, what's up? And uh, I am in the uh, the pilot seat right now and you can see we are armed to the teeth with four size fives and four size three missiles and uh, only two sets of guns but uh, anyway we're gonna go grab uh, a mission and uh, we'll see you at the next clip okay we got our bounty here hey okay. man he's yeah, spawning behind us yeah he's spawning quick all right luther where is he? Where is he? Okay, I got some missiles locked up. Firing. Those are size fives. And it didn't kill him. No, it didn't? No, oh, it didn't, did it? It's a Valkyrie, though. I definitely did some damage. Yeah, he doesn't like it. Oh, he's gone. He went quick. Okay. Okay, we got his buddy here somewhere. The Abe? Just not. Something, yeah. something. Yeah, I'm thinking. Oh, man, those ballistic shotguns are powerful. Yeah, they've strengthened those up over the past couple of patches, oh, yeah. haven't they? Yeah. Alright, get a missile on. There we go. <laughs> Missiles dry. They're not dry. Alright, I got him with a missile. I'll save the other missiles for you. Oh, it shot the size fives, I think. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Okay. This guy is always to the Buccaneer. Come 
my, give me a missile range. Nice, too fast. Alright, Farouk. Size 3 is coming at you, buddy. Well, we hit him with the missile. He's in front of us. Emil Bradshaw. In a Gladius Valley. How do you like those shredders? They're okay. You like the 220s better? Yeah, I like the 220s better. Yeah, oh, okay. ballistic. I'm low style. On yeah. All right, let me see. Uh, these guys are doing these crazy jerk maneuvers. Yeah, this turret's just a little squirrely, too. All right, let me get some missiles on it. Hopefully, I don't hit an asteroid. All right, All right I fired some missiles. Hit him. Oh, it still didn't take him out. I'm completely dry on missiles, too. And now he drops some decoys. There he there is. There he is. All right, where's he? Dropped those decoys a little late, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Shields. It's a uh, hornet. Oh, no, that's bad. first stage. He's still not dead. I think we blew up some of his weapons or something like that. criminal damage ah, what got a crime staff for that for killing a bad guy yeah apparently i got a level one crime staff. <laughs> all right so um after a brief stint in prison uh, after receiving that crime stat uh, jawa and i are back at it however this time i am in the turret and jawa is the pilot we're going to just show a little bit of, of this gameplay we got a bounty hunter mission, and we're going to go hit it up. Yeah. Oh, there's oh, our target. Yeah, there he is. Okay. You're a little too, too low. Or too high. You're a little too high. There you go. Everybody, this is Fist once again in post production. Um, I'm gonna give a little synopsis of this uh, dogfight here because there was some very choice language uh, being used by both myself and Java Sparky when we were in this dogfight. Uh, the server we were in was not uh, great. I think it was kind of headed towards its last legs, and as we fought. Uh, you'll probably see I'm gonna the video is gonna be sped up as I'm saying this but as we thought like it took forever to kill this Vanguard Warden and these ships just kept jousting us to the point where they just kept running into us and running into us and you know we're spinning around and then f for some reason I don't know if it was desync or whatnot but like all of our shots were not killing this Warden and then 
finally, after missiles and, and a lot of guns, it finally went up, and then we had all his friends to deal with, and uh, there was a lot of friends over here too. And I, I'm probably gonna end up cutting this part of the video, but it ended up uh, blowing us up, which was not fun. <laughs> so, and we were a little upset, and then we switched servers and uh, continued, you know, playing for the rest of the night. But just wanted to kind of give a little synopsis here of what happened. The the turrets in this sh in the Gladiator are are good. I really like the layout of it. I like the mobility of it. Um, be the, the only downside to it is because it sits on top of the pilot, basically right in the back, almost like a Drake ship would, but you're outside um, at the angle the pilot's at because of the way the fuselage is shaped, especially the front where the pilot sits is kind of, it kind of is up at an angle a little bit, the front of the ship. So when the pilot is looking almost dead on at the target, he, the I think he's just a little bit too high and as the gunner, I can't get a direct bead onto the target that would be straight ahead of me unless the pilot actually noses down a little bit. So I think maybe there can be some tweaks there. But other than that, um, the, the turret works great. Uh, I like the way the displays are set up. I think it's one of the best looking turrets uh, in the game, uh, which is saying something because uh, you, I've said it numerous times that I don't love a gladiator. So with that, I hope you enjoy the rest of the video and uh, sorry I didn't put the sound on here I just uh, eventually I want to get monetized on here and you know YouTube doesn't like curse words so uh, we'll see you in the next clip guys hey everybody uh, here we are at uh, Urkel.Games the DPS calculator for the Anvil Gladiator and we'll go over a few of the statistics real quick here uh, the Gladiator is a uh, role as a bomber First combat, obviously it's purely a combat ship. Um, ship size is two. Hull HP is pretty low at 10,360. Uh, that's one of the main drawbacks of the Gladiator. The dimensions, yeah, not gonna go over that. Uh, mass, 88,000 kilograms. Speed, 151 meters a second at SCM. Ash burner, 983, which is the, just the top speed. Pitch is 70 degrees a second, yaw 70 degrees a second, roll 104. So, uh, pretty good pitch rolling yaw as far as uh, the, the, the turn rates on its axis. They, It is a capable fighter as far as uh, following people around. It's nowhere near like an arrow or anything, but uh, it, it is fairly agile. Uh, it's hydrogen capacity, 150,000 liters, quantum fuel 583, again, YI use those atlas tribes um, you can pick this ship up at astro armada in area 18 for 1.9 million alpha uvc the uh, this is the the civilian model of the gladiator the civilian model of the gladiator appeals to those who want to explore the verse with a bit of added security supporting a maximum of two the gladiator is perfectly equipped to explore and fight with, with or without a wingman the civilian model allows pilots to choose between an extra cargo hold or a bomb bay, which I have not seen anything where I can put like a cargo hold on there. Uh, it is in its current iteration. It is purely a combat ship. I'm not sure why someone would necessarily want to put a cargo hold because it wouldn't be able to hold very much. It'd be like barely more than an Aurora because the bomb bay is pretty small if you replace that with cargo. Anyway. On to uh, the stock loadout is 960 DPS over here. Um, for the pilot guns, the turret is 880 DPS and the missiles a lot at 112,000 damage. And we can see our shields over here at 10,800. Uh, our power is stock. It's already past half, uh, which is not good. Our cooling is just past half, which is not good. Our EM signature at 21,300 basically is, it's, you know, you're, you're not going to stealth this ship. So let's go through what my temple loadout would be. Um, I do not have my pilot weapons as ballistics because if I do fly the solo, I want to be able to keep going and going if, if possible. So I will switch the pilot weapons over to an attrition three laser repeater. 
as you can see it, it actually has higher dps at, at 900 degrees than the mantis 220 anyway um and, and the mantis 220 actually runs out <laughs> of bullets so but i do switch my man turrets here after uh trying out the shredder which i do love it's just so there's not enough ammo for that shredder uh but the higher alpha damage is nice but I'm going to go with the Mantis GT220 for the Gunner's turret. Uh, that brings our total DPS for the pilot at, obviously, if your attrition's are up to uh, 700 degrees, at 1233. So, significant raise. And it brings our uh, Gunner's DPS to 960. Uh, as far as the missiles go, it comes with a mix of cross-section and uh, infrared, which the, these Ignite 2s are actually infrared. Um, I like to switch them all to the Strike Force 2. As you can see, the, the Strike Force 2 damage is a little bit higher than the Tempest 2, so I will switch all of these missiles over, uh, the size 2s anyway, over to the Strike Force 2. And I, the Stalker 5 is a uh, cross-section size 5 torpedo, so I will leave those alone. This does bring our missile damage to 113,779. Uh, stock all the shields, power plants, coolers, and quantum drive are all military grade C, so they're not horrible as they are. But we're going to go ahead and put the standard loadout on for a size 1 ship. We're going to put uh, FR-66 military grade A shield on there. More hit points and a faster recharge than the all stop stock shields. And then we're going to throw a Palisade Industrial Grade A on there to bring our shields up to a good, nice recharge rate, uh, kind of in the middle there. Uh, the Palisade's real slow, the FR66 is fast, it evens them out. Uh, and the Palisade has the highest shield hit point pool uh, for a size one shield. So this brings our total shields up to 14,000, which is. A little bit more than what we had before so better shields our power plants as you can see we're already over half a power at 2162 we are going to throw the js 300 on there and uh it really well yeah we got a little bit more room there now now we're closer to half still probably not enough this ship could probably use another power plant um the coolers are right now our cooling uh, capacity is 520 so we're going to change these coolers over to Ultra Flows, uh, which is industrial grade A's. And uh, that, that brought our capacity over to 880, which is significant. So now we're about a third. We're using about a third of our capacity, which is right where we want to be. As far as our quantum drive, you see the stock beacon, uh, it can't even make a jump from PO to Hurston without stopping. So it, it is fast at 253 uh, kilometers a second. I'm sorry, 253,000 kilometers per second, but it's not efficient. So for this, we're gonna we're gonna hop down to the Atlas. Uh, yeah, it adds a minute from PO to Hurston uh, as far as time goes, but it'll spool up and spool down faster, and uh, you can make the jump without stopping for gas, which takes a lot more than a minute to do. Um, I don't think there's any extra paints right now for the Gladiator, and Urkel's not showing any. Uh, we don't have the ability to change our radars or thrusters out. So, we're going to go ahead and dump these non-stock items into the cart. We're going to see how much it costs to fully upgrade the Gladiator. Uh, with my default loadout, change all these. I like to go do my one-stop shopping at New Babbage. Just because it's all in one place. and Maybe it's a little more expensive, but it is what it is. I think it's more time efficient. So, uh, the only thing we can't buy at New Babbage uh, is the Atlas Drive. We have to buy that at Port Olisar, and the Attrition 3s we have to buy at Lowerville. Other than that, it's uh, 190,930 credits to fully upgrade this thing if you go to New Babbage. It's, it's less if you just go to. Let's see what price it is. If you go for the lowest prices, it's 186,142. Alpha UEC, but you're going to be going all over. You're going to be going to Port Olisar, Crew L4, Grim Hacks, Levski, PO, Lorville, Crew L5, Port Olisar. So you're going to be going everywhere to get this stuff. Um, you can probably grab, you know, uh, the Atlas, the Strike Force 2s, and the FR66 at Port Olisar. Save yourself a little bit of money because you have to go there anyway. 
Uh, I don't see anywhere you can buy anything else at Orville other than the Intrusion 3s. So everything, you know, it kind of is what it is. So almost 200,000 to fully upgrade this. Uh, again, I don't recommend this ship solo. Uh, maybe if you're coming in just to be a torpedo bomber and, and just coming in to help out your org or some friends defeat a larger target. But once you start getting into... Uh, once you all your missiles are gone, all your torpedoes are gone, and you're a solo pilot, you're limited to two size threes, which just does not really do enough damage uh, to bigger ships if that's what you're going after. So now we're going to switch over to the RSI website. Okay, everybody, so here we are at the RSI website for the Gladiator. Um, we've already gone over the tag line here. Uh, we're going to look at the brochure here in just a... Uh, right after this clip um some good shots of gladiator good pictures uh we have our our standard screenshots here of the gladiator it's such a neat design aesthetic it does not look like this picture uh that we know our displays not quite like that i think this is part of the original concept art um it would be really cool if it looked like that but i think these displays are Yeah, don't, don't love that. Here's the gunner seat uh, and the concept art. The ship, the ship look, man, I just can't get over it. It is one of my favorite design aesthetics, but uh, I just wish I loved it. Like okay, so we'll come down. Uh, we have all of our specs here, uh, 22 meters in length six meters in height uh parker capacity is zero minimum crew one max crew two and it gives all of our picks yeah roll which are different than the urkel site so you know i would urkel pulls its information from the actual files so i would probably trust it more than i trust anything else i do not believe you can buy this ship uh unless you're at some kind of an event like a pre-fly an Invictus launch week aerospace expo something like that so now we're going to move over to the brochure. Here, everybody, here we are at the the Anvil Gladiator uh, brochure from RSI. Uh, Gladiator, dominate, dominant in any environment. That's a really cool picture of a fire against torpedoes out there. Really like it. Next page, torpedoes and missiles, fire and forget. Uh, it says the Gladiator is a cost-effective platform designed for optimum, optimum effectiveness against all targets. Whether you're targeting a single sea fighters or capital ships, the T-8A, mind you, we don't have an A model, we have the civilian model, which is a C. The T-8A Gladiator's prime function is as a heavy ordnance platform. Though the specific loadout can be customized based on mission parameter, the Gladiator can transport four size five ordnance via the interior bay, which that is true. While the wings can be outfitted with a variety of configurations to overcome any combat scenario your gladiator may come across. It is one of the easiest ships of its kind to add new weapons to. This makes it a favorite among weapon manufacturers as they can quickly and easily use the gladiator for development. So, like real life model, I think this may kind of follow like the F-14 Tomcat, which if you don't know that, the Tomcat was built basically around the Phoenix missile platform, which is a, a long range missile. Uh, kind of medium to long range, but it, it, it's a really big missile. It, 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 was, it was meant to fire from really far away, and then you fire it, and then you take off, and it's fire and forget, and you know, it's supposed to blow up this target. I don't know if it's actually ever hit a real target in combat. Um, but basically, the airframe was built around that, and then it changed as the life of the F-14 evolved to a, a really good interceptor, and as weapons technology evolved, uh, it actually, they figured out how to drop some bombs with it and to use different things like tarp spots to take pictures and you know, it became a reconnaissance airplane and all in all really cool airplane designed around a single thing and, and it feels like the gladiator is the same way whereas it's really all about those four size five torpedoes and then the rest of the aircraft can kind of be configured differently to do different things but with the way our missiles work now, we only have three types of missiles. You know, one is not necessarily better than the other. So, state of the game right. 
Uh, laser repeater and cannon on Dogfighter 2, it says. Evil's Gladiator has proven itself against a broad spectrum of threats and all warfare conditions. As you saw in the video earlier, you know, when I was doing solo, I did pretty well uh, by myself. Uh, those aren't like really hard targets to, to do anything with, and I did use missiles quite a bit. Uh, I would not want to go up against uh, much bigger ships with much harder to penetrate shields with just two size threes, though. Even if I had a gunner, I was going up against a Carrick or a Hammerhead or something solo. It's just not enough firepower. Now, maybe we can, if we had all of our missiles to shoot at it, and then we had our guns as well, great. But if you're fighting anything like a big ship with an escort, you're, you know, you, you, you lay your missiles into the big ship so your friends can finish it, and then maybe you take, take on the escort. Um, the Gladiator quickly established itself as a hard-hitting and devastating torpedo and missile ship. You will find the T-8 more capable, more than capable, of holding its own against medium and short-range adversaries. Between the wing-mounted bearing Mark IV guns and twin CF-117 Bulldogs from Klaus and Vernon. Now, it doesn't have those guns, right? <laughs> it doesn't have bearing Mark IV guns. It doesn't have 117s. 117s are size 1. So instead, the ship has two, you know, size 3s for the pilot, size 3s for the gunner. As many combat pilots will test, success in the dogfight isn't exclusively based on your weapons. A ship must be maneuverable, as it spells that out. The Gladiator features eight M116 maneuvering thrusters from Hydro Propulsion to keep your ship agile and on target. It, it is pretty agile. Operator testimonials. Uh, I'm not going to read that, but cool stuff. Uh, you know, really cool uh, brochure propaganda from CIG. Not really propaganda, but I mean, it is. It's to promote the ship. Uh, I guess in, in the history of the UAE, it's had you know, an illustrious career. You can use the ship for multiple purposes, uh, like strategic to space to ground bombing runs. Definitely you can do that. Uh, I think this ship would be really good going up against uh, those size 6 turrets if you go into a mission that requires, like you're coming into... Uh, Bunker mission or something like that where you got to go into FPS. Uh, Gladiator, especially with a friend in there and the gunners and the, the top turret. You go in there and they, you can take out those. You should be able with your missiles take out those turrets and with a little bit of gunfire and be able to survive and land and go, go take care of that bunker mission. Uh, and it says support for long range squadron missions, not with the quantum fuel capacity, it doesn't. Uh, modified CNC target assignment for multi squadron combat scenarios. I think. That's uh, true. CNC being command and control. Aggressive environmental recalibration. I'm not sure what that means. Capital ship torpedo strikes, definitely. Although size fives are not going to take down a capital ship. Stealth operations. Operations. Uh, you know, it'd be interesting. I, I, I would probably try to stealth this ship out, but I think it just has too much of a signature stock. Uh, it's never going to be like an eclipse or a ghost or uh, anything like that. Uh, supply drops through enemy control territory, maybe. Blockade running, definitely. Law enforcement, high value target interception, definitely. This is a ship that is meant to fight, just fight. Uh, as far as the multi role capability, logistics, no. Rugged construction, eh, it's average. Everything's size one. Combat readiness, yes. Offense, uh, military innovation, leveraging innovative approaches and cutting edge technology and Valley Aerospace built for optimum performance to deliver maximum payload. Uh, sure, I mean, this this brochure is old. Um, so I don't know how accurate this stuff is. If you want to read, I'm not going to read this, but if you want to read this stuff, feel free to pause and take a gander yourself. Next up is Intelligent Interface from Thought to Action. Uh, again, this is not exactly how the cockpit looks, although I would be really enthusiastic if, if this is what's going to look like in the future. I think it would be really cool if it looked like this. Um, and it's pretty close, but it's it's not quite. It's... Anvil engineers have not only pursued the latest in operator interface technology, Yeah, so this is a lot of lore of the ship. Gunner Bombardier, double your power. 
They have those focus on communication and response. You don't just have one crewmate, but two. It's as though Amber Amdell were in the cockpit with you. Um, I do like flying this thing with a friend. It's pretty neat. It's it's really fun. Like you know, whether you're in the uh, the hurricane or you're in a gladiator or you're in a Valkyrie, it's it's really fun to do. Uh, have friends in there and do missions with them, and everybody's on the same ship. Uh, it really adds to a sense of accomplishment. And then you did something together. That's really what keeps bringing me back to this game is hanging out and playing with my friends. Um, I was right at the beginning of the video. Number one is a PDOT tube, which is uh, for airspeed. Uh, it gets RAM air inputs and it translates uh, that RAM air into an airspeed indicator. Uh, so that's, that's what the thing is on the front if you look at number one. But you can see a breakdown of uh, ship here. Uh, it says number 23 is tail navigation. That's that kind of back spoiler stabilizer, stabilator wings. Uh, 23 says tail navigation. 24 says ECM aerials. Okay. Uh, interesting on that. And then it gives just more of a breakdown on this. So definitely... Man, I wish this just was updated a little bit and we would know, uh, you know, exactly. Or, or, or even if we could see some of this stuff or see maintenance being done. I'm not sure if this, this ship is in Squadron 42 or not, but I hope it is because it's it looks like it should be. Uh, different views of the Gladiator here, and it's all about, you know, at time of publication, the models considered factual and it'll change and everything like that uh, and that's it for the brochure of the Anvil Gladiator
Hey everybody, so this is the Anvil Gladiator video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and you learned a little bit from it. Um, I enjoyed flying this ship uh, at the end. Um, I think I've come to appreciate a little bit more. I still don't think I'd ever spend real money for it, but I think it has actually found a use and found a role for me in the game. I think there's other ships that do its role just as good, uh, but you know maybe CIG will give it some love at some point. And uh, I, I want to know your thoughts. I want to know if you own a Gladiator, if you like being the pilot, if you like being the gunner. Uh, what are your thoughts on the way the missiles are set up and the torpedoes, uh, the way it flies? Just. Let's go ahead and talk with each other and engage and uh, have some kind of a discourse and, and let me know your thoughts. Uh, if you haven't already and you've made it to the end of the video, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as it just makes the channel stronger and uh, maybe YouTube will push our videos out to more people. We can get more subscribers. I'll get more, you know, more, more viewers and then eventually we'll be able to do things like ship giveaways and have uh, just a bigger community overall. Uh, I appreciate you watching. And I wish you all a very lucrative time in the verse. And at this point when I'm editing, uh, we're about to lose Delamar and Levski. So I want to say I can't wait to see those two places in the Knicks system one day. So with that, I'll leave everybody and take care. Good night, Delamar.